Okay, so here's a little demonstration of how you can, or how I thought that you should use the uh, my panorama heading tool. So these tools are made for if you want to upload a panorama to Google Views, and you want get want to get that little radar looking directly. Um, some people take their panoramas always facing facing north. I usually don't bother about that um, while I'm shooting, or I forgot about it to write down the uh, the heading, whatever. So this tool is. Um, is there so you can use a visible feature inside your panorama and then you correlate it with something on the map and work out the heading or so the direction in which the panorama was shot from there. Generally the, pan the heading of a panorama is basically at the, at the middle point of the panorama that's if that's heading zero then that middle point is pointing north. If that middle of your panorama image is say facing east so looking to the right basically on, on your map then your heading should be 90 degrees. Anyway, you can do a bit of reading. This is just a quick introduction. There's basically two tools that I made. One is to determine the bearing of a feature in a panorama. That's what we need for the second step. So let me just open these two tools. This one is the first, this one is the second. The second one is where you have the map. You, you find the location of your panorama, where it was shot, and then the feature, you mark the feature that you're seeing in the panorama, and then it'll spit out the, the heading of it. So um, you can do this very easily. First of all, you need to determine the bearing of a feature in your panorama. You can either use something like PanoGL view. So here's a panorama that I shot. It's, uh, it's stitched completely. I'll show you quickly. Here's the final panorama, all stitched. This is the source frames here coming from my camera. They have GPS information in them. I'll show you quickly. This is coming straight out of my camera, which records GPS as I shoot. I'll just show you quickly. So we've got GPS information, but we don't have any, any heading because the camera doesn't know which way it's shot. So let's see. We start by working out the heading of a, of a, of a feature. So here's the panorama. And for easiness sake, let's just use that flagpole that you can see over here. Oh, there's the flagpole. We want to use that feature um, as 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 visual feature that we then find on the map. So I, I, I highlight my cursor on it, and as you can see in the bottom right of that window, you can see a few numbers wiggling. You've got a mouse P slash T, and the first number is my horizontal um, coordinate, basically my my um, my bearing, and the other the vertical um, is the second coordinate. But in this case, I really just care about the horizontal coordinate. It says 148. On it. So you can use your panorama viewer if it shows you those numbers to work that out, but you can also use this tool here. So in order for that to work, you want a JPEG version of your, your panorama. So I'll just uh, do that quickly. I use image magic convert granby 4 h tiff to granby 4 h dot, or let's just call it blah dot JPEG, and I want to resize it. So let's say resize 1200 pixels is a good number. And that should spit out my converted panorama. And then this one I will load here in the bottom. I should redo the website a bit, but at the bottom is panorama source image. Uh, you can select it there. And so here's your alter alternative method to determining the, the bearing. It just loads the image inside your browser. It's all completely local. Nothing gets transmitted over the internet. You can convince yourself, of course, by looking at the source code of the page. The red line here you can drag. And that's the one again you use to highlight um, whatever you want to highlight. So I'm highlighting the, the, the flagpole and you can see at the bottom here um, the, that number changes as I move it. So if I put that on the, on the flagpole you can see it's also about a heading of 148 degrees just as we found in here. Um, 148 degrees there in the bottom. So let me close the viewer. We'll recall that our feature that we're interested in is at a heading uh, at a bearing of one. 148 degrees. Now the next thing is for this tool, the first thing you need to enter is the location where your panorama was shot. So one way of getting that information is you can just copy paste it out of your EXIF viewer, but I like to do, as you can see, I like to do some uh, command line magic. So uh, to get those coordinates, you can, where did I put it? It's in the help document here. There's a little, again, this is just a completely uh, <laughs> rough version of the website. I'll hopefully improve the interface a bit. But here's a command in the middle under usage, exif tool command to get GPS info from your image. So again, this is completely a convenient script for you. For that, you want the file name of 
the image which has the GPS information. In that case, I'll just take one of the source frames of my panorama. So that's the one here. I'll paste it into here and it spits out a little exif tool command. Again, you copy paste that, execute that in your terminal and it just prints out for easy copy pasting the coordinates. Again, you can use an exif to, uh, you can use previous whatever which show you exif information. I think it's just very quick to do it this way. So I'll paste the uh, panel location in here, click submit, and it'll bring me to the location where the panorama was shot. It was precisely there. And now we've got a red flashing text in the crosshair and it says click map to add target. So the target is the visual feature that I want to use to, to work out the heading. In that case, we can look here, it's the flagpole is there. So I'll just click on the flagpole. It draws a line and says, well, the ultimate heading of the panorama is going to be 240, uh, 217 degrees. That's not quite true because the feature is not at zero degrees inside my panorama. Recall we used that other tool here to, to read out where the bearing is in the panorama. If it was in the middle, then this would be correct. But because it's offset over here, um, I'm gonna, uh, I need this number down here. So let's just say 148 degrees. I'll put that number in here, 148 degrees. And then it spits out the heading here. So this is basically um, the information that you want. Now I'll just show you a few more things how you can actually apply or enter this information into your image before you upload it to Google Views. Um, this tool again creates you a little exif tool command to apply this value to your panorama. So for that we want the file name of the, of the panorama file, which is this one here, and just spits out that exif tool command. Again, easy copy paste execute in the command line and it just adds, sets that heading inside into the in the panorama TIFF file. Now just one last thing before you can upload the panorama you don't really want to upload a TIFF file to uh, Google Views. I don't think it actually works. So you just create a quick JPEG version. Um, let's do that. We can use convert. Uh, then we say granby.tiff. Convert by the way is part of the uh, image magic suite very very handy suite. I'm sure you'll probably have that installed anyway if you're watching this. And then here's the second one, Granby JPEG. It's the one we want to create and that'll just convert it. Now there's one problem, it doesn't actually copy the EXIF over into the image. So you want one more um, run of EXIF tool, uh, tags from file, then you take the TIFF file and your JPEG file and that's it. That'll just copy the EXIF information over quick look that it's all there indeed and we've got the EXIF information GPS including the image direction. There's one more thing that you need to do though um, you still need a few, you still need a bit of um, a few tags for for Google views or um, Google Plus where you have to upload it first to recognize the thing and for that I've also given you a little script here so that's number C on my main page again enter the file name of your image so we'll just copy that again and then it just gives you this long command that comes from uh, panotwins.de thanks for that you apply that and now you've got all the required actually hang on I applied that to the TIFF file I want to apply that to the JPEG because that's the one I'm uploading so now my JPEG contains all the required information all the um, XMP metadata that Google views and requires to display it on your map including the correct image heading that we determined using my two nifty little tools here. So yep, that's just a quick rundown how I thought or how I personally use these tools that I, um, that I made. I hope you find it beneficial as well. Uh, let me know what you think and yeah, catch you later.